All right, my title or the title of the message this morning is Who do you really serve? Who do you really serve? Just think about it. Who do you really serve? I'm talking spiritually. I'm talking uh, in connection with God and the world and Satan. Who do you really serve? The first scripture I want us to have a look at is Joshua 24 verse 15. It says, And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And as head of my house, I'm saying that as well. We will serve the Lord. As head of, uh, as, as the pastor of this church under Jesus Christ, I am saying we will serve the Lord. Everyone has to make up his or her mind who they want to serve. You see, in, the, in, in this day and hour, there's a lot of pressure. And I see it on a daily basis at work, wherever I go, how Christians fall by the wayside choosing against Christ you will not believe it but I want us to look at this word serve what does it mean to serve what what comes up in your mind if you think of serve what is it that you conjure up in your mind do you think of someone behind a broom do you think of someone in you know washing dishes what what what, what does it mean to serve and to serve specifically the Lord. What does it mean? I checked it out this morning. The primitive root meaning of serve. Guess what it is? Anybody? To do, obey. To? To honor. You can, all, you can include it all of, uh, in that. But it simply means... To work. To work. In order to serve someone, it includes or it really comes from a root meaning to work or to till. You know what till is? To till the soil. To work. When you till the ground. With other words, it really goes as far as being enslaved. Being enslaved. That's what it means. If you say, I serve the Lord, you are saying, I'm enslaved to the Lord. I'm a bond servant. And you know what a bond servant is? In the Old Testament, a bond servant was someone who loved his master so much that he chose to stay with his master and to serve even without pay. He was part of the household uh, basically because he loved his master the only thing the master had to do was to take him put his ear against the doorpost and make a hole through that that was a sign of the fact that he's now a bond servant he chose to remain with his master even though uh, his servitude the, the, the years that he served uh, we're now past. He, he wanted to be there. Now we are to be bond servants of Christ. I mean, if you are only serving Jesus or uh, following Jesus or coming to church and calling yourself a Christian just because of what Christ can do for you, you're not doing, you're not serving him out of love, then something is wrong. Amen. Uh, when you love somebody, there's nothing that you will not do. You will never look at any cost. Isn't that so? Because you want to serve out of love. And Christ wants us to serve Him. God the Father wants us to serve Him because we love Him. And, and even in our giving, it must all come out of a heart of love. Alright? Now, this implies a total. Say total. Not the petrol, but total. <laughs> Maybe you can use the petrol to get on fire. But <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> Somebody got it. Uh, <laughs> say total. total. Commitment. commitment. This implies a total commitment to God and what He wants and not in the slightest way diverting from that. So if you say, I serve the Lord, you are saying, I'm so totally committed to Him. Whatever He wants, that's what I want. Whatever He says, that's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to be diverted. I'm not going to be distracted. I'm not going to go my own way. I'm not going to uh, fulfill my own desires. I am only interested in what He wants. Then you are a bond servant. Only then you are serving God. Don't, don't say you serve God if you don't ever do what God says. Don't say I serve God and you debate His word to try and get out of stuff because your own uh, nature wants something else. Now, uh, Jesus Christ says something. He says in Matthew 16, 24, He says, uh, then said Jesus unto his disciples, and I specifically, there's three uh, uh, Gospels that mention the same thing, but this one emphasizes in Matthew that he spoke to his disciples. Now, I would like to believe that all of you sitting here, you are a disciple or you intend to be a disciple of the Lord Jesus. God has called us as a church, the whole church globally, but uh, has really emphasized that part to us as a local church to not run after crowds, but to make disciples, to focus on making disciples. And he's saying this to his disciples, to those that say, I want to follow Christ. He says, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. And that is real tough. If you really study all the meaning of what he's saying there, the words, it is absolute discipline. And you know the disciple comes from the word discipline. So it is a very disciplined life where you are not listening to your body or to your soul, but you are listening to God and you only go for what God says. You are totally committed. You are basically dead to yourself. Now, I want us in this uh, uh, verse of Scripture, I want us to look at the word deny. What does deny mean? Let's get it from you quickly. What does it mean to deny? To? To kill it, yeah? Make it of no effect? Refusing. What else? Hey? Disallow. Disallow. Yeah. Make it to be non existent. Okay. You're sort of on the right track there. There's the Greek word aparniumai. Aparniumai. And that means. To deny utterly. That is, that means, when you deny utterly, totally, it means to disown. To disown or to abstain. So all of what you've said fits into, into that uh, description. That means, if I say, I deny myself. This is what Christ wants. He says that. And deny himself. That means I disown myself. I abstain from anything that I want to do. That's what it means to deny self. I turn my back, really, on myself. Now, how many of you have heard other kinds of messages? Uh, you know, that talks about how you can fulfill your desire and your dream and how you must do what you want to do. 
and get to where you... No, it's got nothing. To follow Christ means I turn my back on self. I disown myself. I deny myself completely. I abstain from anything that I want to do that's contrary to what he wants. Now, many times you will want to do certain things, and it's in line with what his will is. That's why the scripture says, if you delight yourself in the Lord, He will give you the desire of your heart. It doesn't mean that He will now make things happen that you want. It simply means He puts His desire into your heart. And you find that you no longer desire certain things. You now desire His things. I fi found that to be very true when I came to the Lord. I had certain desires, but when I gave my life over to the Lord, all of a sudden I had different desires. I had even the most ridiculous desire of becoming a preacher. And uh, he's put it there. I never had it before. I remember my father, uh, one of those father-son talks when I was a boy. Uh, there weren't many of them, but he said, My son, uh, I, I just want you to know you can become anything that you desire to become, except two things. You must never become these two things. And it was outside our house on a plot. I can vividly remember it. He says, don't become a policeman and don't become a preacher. <laughs> and he, 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 he didn't say preacher. He said, domini. Moet nie a policeman word en moet nie a domini word nie. And God so had it that I became both. <laughs> and, and now I'm sitting as a chaplain in the police after I tried to run uh, away from that, that call a few times. But that's true. He didn't want. He thought that was that was the worst thing you can do, is to become a policeman, and a duomini. And today many call me duomini at work, and I don't want to correct them. I'm not a duomini. <laughs> Now to deny is a very strong word, and can as as you can see, as we've mentioned now already it means when it comes to following christ you totally disown yourself and you ab abstain from anything that would take the attention listen carefully you abstain from everything and anything that will take the attention and time that he demands from you i remember the very first prophetic word that i've received one of those prophets from america said there will be at times that God will ask of me things that are uh, legitimate, but I have to abstain from that to attend to what He wants. And you know, many times He does that. And you can argue and you can say, but this is not sin and this is not wrong, but what does He say? What, what is it that He demands? You have to de then deny yourself and what you want to do. So I'm going to say it again. It's to totally disown yourself. And you abstain from anything that would take the attention and the time that he demands of you. Now just think of the times that he has spoken to you. Of the times that you've read in the words certain things. And you have walked away and said no later, other day, other time. I am first going to do my thing. That means you've not denied yourself, but you've denied him, and therefore you cannot criticize Peter the Apostle when he denied Christ. Because we all have, at one stage, denied him. Now let's also look at the word disown. I checked that word out according to the dictionary, because I wanted to know exactly what it means. Do you want to know? I'm so glad you asked, because I want, I, I burn to share it with you. Disown means to refuse, to acknowledge or maintain. Listen to this very carefully. It's to refuse to acknowledge or to maintain any connection. So if you, if you deny a person, if you, for example, deny Christ, you refuse to acknowledge him and to maintain any connection with him 
Now, when Christ says you need to deny yourself before you can follow me, he's saying that you need to refuse to acknowledge yourself and maintain any connection with self, with self-desire. It's a bit different than what we have been taught in the last few decades. Isn't it so? Because in the last few decades, the emphasis was a lot on self instead of God. Trust yourself. Believe in yourself. I'm saying don't. I've tried that. To trust in myself and to believe in myself. And I went from bad to worse. But when the focus comes back to God and you acknowledge that you can do nothing without Him and that He's everything and you deny self and put self aside, self-confidence aside. Did you know that God's not expecting you to have self-confidence? He's expecting you to have confidence in Him. Only when you have confidence in Him do you become bold. Not when you have self-confidence. So if you don't have any self-confidence, you are okay. The next step is put your confidence in God. All right? Because you will let yourself down. But God will never when you put your confidence in God. So to disown means to refuse to acknowledge or maintain any connection with what you disown. And in this case, it is yourself. With other words, what self wants, what self desires. And to abstain from it in as far as He, God, does not want you to involve yourself in your own desires. I wanted to become a professional boxer when I... Uh, God saved, God says, uh-uh, stop. This is not the way you're going. And I had to say, no to self. It was a struggle at first, but I had to say, no to self, and I'm not sorry about that. I would have been punchy by now. <laughs> Number two, God will not, or Jesus will not, ask you anything that he himself did not do or does not do. So Jesus is asking you and me, if we want to follow him, in fact, he's not asking, he's telling, it's a command. If we want to follow him, we need to deny ourselves, take up our cross and follow him. He himself did exactly the same thing. That's why he can require it from us. And I want to show, show it to you in John 5.30. There are many other scriptures that bear this out. But John 5.30 says, and Jesus speaking, he says, I can of myself do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my ju judgment is just because, what? I seek not my own will. You know, he became man, just like you and I, with all the passions. He was feeling the same way in his physical body and his soul dimension. He experienced the temptations, just like you and I. But he said, I seek not my own will. What did he do? He constantly denied himself. And he did what the Father wanted. He says, but the will of the Father which has sent me. And remember, Jesus said, as the Father sent me, so sent I you. And you and I cannot accomplish that unless we come to a place where we totally deny ourself. Where we say no to self constantly. Paul the Apostle writes and he says, I die daily. That has to do with us denying self. Turning the back on self. And saying, Lord, what do you want? John 8, 28 says, then said Jesus unto them, when you, have, uh, 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 when you have lifted up the Son of Man, what does that mean? It talks about the cross. Lifting up means uh, the, the crucifixion. When you have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall you know that I am. And in italics, in certain translations, it has italics, He. But it really means, then you will know that I am. I am God. I am the I am. 
and I do nothing of myself, but as my Father has taught me, I speak these things. Can you see? He only did what the Father wanted. Another place he says, I do nothing unless I've seen my Father do it. Total denial of self. Turned the back totally on himself. And may I say this, Jesus never had confidence in himself. He says, I can do nothing without my Father. That means denying self, denying self-confidence. If he had self-confidence, he would have said, I can do it. But he did it with the power and the ability, whatever he did, which the Father gave him. Because he only sought to do the will of the Father. And I'm again asking you this morning, who are you serving? Are you serving self? Are you serving Satan? Are you serving the world? Are you really serving God? Jesus was so committed to the Father and so denied himself that he fulfilled the plan of the Father by going to the cross and completing the task of redeeming us. Just think if he yielded to his own will. And there's a good example, maybe the most vivid example, when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane. And we visited that place, and uh, um, those old olive trees still standing thousands of years. And in that place, he had probably the biggest struggle between his will and what he wanted and what the Father wanted. And he still yielded there to the Father. Never gone his own way. And we thank God today for that. Because if it wasn't for that, we would not be saved. You see, so many of us, we want to do God's will. We talk lightly about it. We want to fulfill God's purpose for our lives. But let me tell you, it costs everything. It costs denial of self. It costs to turn your back on self and what you want. Now, our Master and Savior set such, such an example of self-denial and of disowning Himself in order to please the one who sent Him. Is it any wonder that He expects the same from us? You cannot really follow Jesus unless you're prepared to do what He says. It's no wonder that he says few will enter think to yourself are you prepared to do what he's asking you we want to see disciples rise we want to make disciples are you really prepared to be a disciple of Jesus It's not a, 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 a softy kind of lifestyle. Are you prepared to go wherever He tells you to go? Are you prepared ready to do whatever He wants you to do? God has called us as a church, as I said, to make disciples. Because only true disciples, true followers of Jesus will stand the end time pressure that we are now beginning to feel. There's pressure that's going to increase. You feel it at work. Even with this thing that they want you to take. The, 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 the pressure is on. And it's just a precursor for the mark of the beast. And if you cannot stand your stand and say, I have a right to choose and not to be forced I want to trust the Lord I mean so many in, in the workplaces wherever they are amongst family will not even talk about Jesus will not even open their mouths and say Jesus Christ is my Lord I remember when we got saved one of my brothers after we got saved my eldest brother I hope he doesn't watch this we discovered that he was saved years ago. Going to church, we never knew it. He was a silent Christian. 
Just think if he came out and told us, that we would have been saved earlier. And so, if you cannot follow Jesus like this, deny yourself, you will not stand. And remember the word of God says, many will fall away. There's going to be a great falling away. I was talking to Pastor Jason yesterday and he says, you know, in America, there are pastors taking their church keys and handing it over to other pastors and saying, we are out of here. We are not in the ministry anymore. We've made a mistake. And they were preachers of big churches, large congregations, just falling away, can't take the pressure anymore. They had the call of God. You can't just, you know, enter ministry without a call of God and build a church without the call of God. Now, I know there are some fake ones, but these were real pastors falling away. How many have we heard in our country saying we no longer believe in the Bible? We no longer believe in the creation story. How many have you heard worldwide that publicly deny Christ and say we no longer believe that? There's a great falling away because the pressure is on. And God uses this to purify the church because he's coming back for a church without spot and wrinkle. So in the fire, the dross is being removed. And the question is, are you prepared to serve him like that question is who are you really serving are you really serving God are you really serving Christ or do you debate everything he says are you trying to make believe that it's not for today it's not for you Jesus said go and teach them all that I taught you and we need to stay in the doctrine of Christ Everything Christ said is valid today. God's word is unchanging. In fact, he is the word of God. And he changes not. Amen? Amen. Now today I'm calling you and me and all of us to a place in the name of the Lord Jesus. To a place of denial of self. If we want to go forward, have the next step, see the revival, see what we are praying for, that we believe God has laid upon our hearts, we need to deny self. We need to turn the back on self. We need to deny the world and all of the temptations that Satan comes against us with. And it's a prophetic call, really. I'm calling you, just like Elijah called the whole of Israel. Take this as a prophetic call. Who are you going to serve? If God is God, then let Him be God. If He's the Savior, then let Him be your Savior. If He's the Master, then let Him be the Master in your life. And you already know what that means. So today I'm calling you to a place in the name of the Lord Jesus, a place of denial of self, to a place of disowning yourself in order to serve Him willingly, not begrudgingly, willingly and with love. I'm calling you, God is calling you to serve Him, to deny yourself, to disown yourself. Because if you're not willing to do that, you're going to have a hard time in the years to come. Because it's going to be tough to try and live under that conviction and also condemnation that will come from your own heart. Because you're not following through. You know, God wants people that will be so committed to Him that they will not love their lives even until death. Are you prepared to die for Christ? It's really what he's asking. If he wants, will you die for him? Many of us will, maybe. I know everyone hopes for the rapture to take place before any real persecution comes. 
But did you know, do you know, all over the world the church is being persecuted and has been persecuted since the beginning? People have died for Christ, still do today. But it's coming now to South Africa. You can feel it. You can sense it. It's coming to Africa in a greater way. Northern Africa already experiencing it in a terrible way where they behead people and kill Christians, burn uh, churches. And it's coming. It's coming closer. And we need to make up our minds that we're going to serve God the way that He wants us to serve Him. Now, how, how really does the, this look in practice? Just quickly, I want you to talk with me. How does this now that I've shared with you, how does it look in practice, in practical life? No, absolute stilte. <laughs> How does it look like for you? How does denying yourself look like? How does serving God look like? Okay, I'll give you a few pointers so that you can meditate on that and you can add to that, all right? When he says, I don't want you to miss the coming together of yourselves, it is a command and expect that we do obey that. That's how it looks like. How does it look like? I obey that thing. I do that. I don't say it's too cold. I don't say, well, my favorite program is on TV. I don't say, no, I will watch it online. Because he says, and he's the head of the church, and he says through his spirit, do not forsake the gathering of yourselves together as some have the habit. How does it look in practice? I come to church. That's how it looks like. Whether it rains, snow, whether the water fills the place. Have you seen those, those pictures of the Chinese sitting in the water? They're coming to church. That's dedication. That's obedience. That's denying self. Come on. People have all kinds of excuses. Well, uh, me and my wife, the two of us, we can read the Bible at home. And I guarantee you they don't. <laughs> you should be doing that over and above. Okay? Remember that he said, Jesus said, that whenever we are together, whenever we gather in his name, he's in the midst of us. In Revelation, you have the symbolism of how John sees him walking up and down amidst the seven golden lampstands. The lampstands symbolic of the churches. He's in the churches. He gathers with us. He's here today. Now, just think of how disappointed Jesus must be when he gathers with a few and he sees the rest are not there. Ask the home church pastors how they feel when people just don't rock up. Now, multiply that by I don't know how much. That's how he must feel when his people disobey and don't get together. Come on. Or ask us how we feel sometimes when people don't come together to church and you know you've got a word for God and those people that needed to hear that word so that God can bless them don't come so that's how it looks like in practice how many of you want to disappoint Jesus nobody how, about, how many of you want to please Jesus we all do it's as simple as this to please Him. As simple as this, obey Him. Just obey Him, okay? Ja, maar die familie het alweer gekom. Bring hulle saam. That's why I, I, I always appreciate Jakob when family come visit, he brings them with. That's his time. You know, when you take the time that is set aside for God and you give it to something else or someone else, not only are you ashamed of Jesus, you are no Christian witness 
and you are displeasing and disobeying God. Amen? Just bring them with us. They'll get the, the message next time. If they don't want to come to church, they'll come after church or before church or, or something like that. That is denying self. Denying self means I'm not going to I'm not going to please my family. This feeling of, oh, maybe I'm going to displease them. I'm denying that. I would rather please the Lord. Amen? So, dear people of God, I'm talking practical stuff now. Never do your own business or arrange your own things to take place at the set a part time when the disciples of Jesus meet. The other day I was, spoke to someone that hasn't been to church for a while and he says, no, nah, it's Sunday. No, I'm helping my family member. We're fixing the caravan. I mean, I said, but you know, this is, this. I mean, you're not sitting the whole day in church, maybe an hour and a half or so. How can you take God's time and give it? You're not serving God. Let me tell you, you're not serving God if that's your mindset, if that is what you're doing. You're serving your own desire or somebody else, putting somebody else first. And if you cannot say amen at this time, please say, ouch. <laughs> You see, when you do that, firstly, it is not right. Say, it is not right. It is not right. And if you've done it, smack your hand. And secondly, <laughs> and secondly, it's not denying yourself either. Neither is it taking up your cross. Now, if you cannot even do that, what will you do when the pressure is on? What will you do when they say, take the mark or die? you will most probably take the mark. Certainly, I can guarantee you, you won't stand when the battle is hot. The Bible foretells that many will fall away. I've already shared that with you, and what, what, what Jason said, it's just amazing. And, and, and it's not just one pastor who did this, it's a few of them just getting out of the ministry, just saying, precious to, you know. Have you, have you heard what Zimbabwe is doing? Their uh, cabinet ministers are, are saying to the church, you're allowed to go to church only if you have been vaccinated twice. Otherwise, you will be arrested and your pastor. Now, that is per persecution of the church. Now, I've got nothing against people who had received the vaccination. Everybody has the choice. But to use a thing like that to persecute the church, they are really using it to persecute the church. In fact, they have said, and I've heard them say, some of them, the guys in the, in the, uh, in the New World Order, the church is a plague that needs to be removed. Christians are a plague that needs to be removed, as well as Israel. They are a plague. They need to be removed. They stand in the way. And that's why you find these this ridiculous rules uh, against the church that does not apply to other gatherings. And, and it's coming here. It's coming here. Another one. Practical thing. When he says in his word, pray without ceasing or watch and pray. And we just do not do it because we find what is to us valid excuses not to pray. How many of you have found a valid excuse? Huh? To you, 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 you convince yourself. Valid excuse. I, I, I can't get up so early. But you are awake. No, I'll, I'll lie in bed and pray. Dear Heavenly Father. <laughs> you never pray in bed. Get out of bed. <laughs> Kneel somewhere. Walk up and down. No, I'm not going to go to prayer meeting. You know, I've got so much chores at, at home. And prayer meetings are always very sparsely populated. But prayer is where our power lies. 
Without prayer, nothing happens. Without prayer, no revival happens. Every revival in the past was preceded with people praying. Amen? There's no valid excuse not to pray. But when we do that, when we don't pray, when we don't read the Bible, when we don't have fellowship with the Lord, what are we doing? We are denying Him. We are not denying self. And He says you need to deny yourself, disown yourself, even if it's cold, even if it's uncomfortable. You go and do what He says. Then His power proceeds to you, towards you. Then you will have His presence abiding on you. Amen? That's part of, of carrying the cross. Now, carrying your cross, I'm not even going to get into that. It, it, it's, it's a whole bunch of things. Maybe I'll just ask you quickly what you think about that. Now, when he demands that we live a holy life in spirit and body, and we decide, no, we're going to conform to every whim and fashion of the world, you are not denying yourself. You are denying Christ. I mean, think of how many things comes out in the world. I mean, you can't keep up with the stuff. I don't even want to keep up with the stuff. I'm not interested in what the world does. But how many people, even in church, run after the things of the world? If the world comes up with a thing, now it's okay. The world says sex changes are right and uh, they stand in awe seeing uh, Peter becomes Ruby uh, and, and they think it's so awesome and then the church gets onto the bad bandwagon. No, maybe we must accept that. You know, we are living in a different time. The word of God is the same. It's evil. The world is evil. And what Hollywood portrays and brings out to you, it's evil. Human rights, what much of what human rights stands for, it's evil. And it doesn't mean that if the majority agrees, they are right. This is something the church needs to take hold of. Because we think that if the majority says it's okay, then it must be all right. And then they do it, and it brings destruction. Hmm? He demands that we live a holy life in spirit, body, and we cannot conform to the world. But what does the word say? Be not conformed to the world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And you can only renew your mind when you get into the Word and get the mind of Christ and do what He says. That's denying self. It means to abstain from the things of the world and all forms of ungodliness. In fact, uh, Paul writes and he says, abstain from all appearance of evil. That means if something just looks wrong if something might just look wrong to somebody else you abstain from it that's how far we must go you say but that almost sounds like law it's in the new testament you see the difference between the old and the new is just that in the old they didn't have within themselves the power and the ability to meet the standard now in the new christ has given us a new heart, a new spirit, and He has given us grace. Grace means the ability of God to do what I could not do in myself. So now I can live a, a higher standard, a holier life than the guys in the Old Testament. If your righteousness, Jesus says, does not exceed that of the Pharisees, you will not enter the kingdom of God. And if you go and see what a Pharisee's righteousness was like, go and read Philippians and what Paul says. He says, as far as the righteousness that comes from the law was concerned, I was blameless. So he was a Pharisee that never contradicted or trespassed the law of God, not even once. Even in his persecution of the church, he thought he was doing the service of God. And when God opened his eyes and he looked at all of his own righteousness, he says, this is but dung. This is, uh, uh, this is nothing. Now I can live a holier life because now I can live it from the heart. Can you see we don't have an excuse under grace? We don't. We are supposed to live a higher standard 
And Christians must live a higher standard. And I'm saying these things not to f- make you feel condemned because we've all, we all are guilty of that. Because we don't realize, because there's so much of voices speaking to us, so much of preachers preaching a false grace message that encourages the churches to sin and to say it's okay, you know. God has already forgiven you. He's paid for it, so just live it up, man. Because He's most forgiven you, past, present, and future. Which is true, but you cannot trample on the blood of Christ and make His grace cheap. Has He not said that He has come to set His people free from their sin? So how can I continue in sin? Yes, I'm forgiven. He's paid the full price. But that should make me fear Him and hold Him in awe and reverence. Because we've... Is there not a scripture that says how much the more will we not be held accountable who has despised such grace or who have neglected such salvation that is given to us another one last one how does it look in practice when I deny self when injustice happens in society instead of just keeping to my corner and being uninvolved Denying self means I get involved and I speak out against it, not worrying about the consequences. I rise up for what is right. I'm a voice for those who cannot speak for themselves, like the unborn babies that are being killed, like the widows and the orphans and the poor. I'm speaking out. I'm rising up. I'm standing for justice, even if it means contradicting the politically correct and the government government's not always right let us have the same attitude like Daniel's friends have and like like the early church had we must obey God rather than men we will not bow even if our God does not deliver us we will not serve your gods As far as the government is right and in line with the word of God, you must obey. So you pay your talk of money. Because the Bible says, give to everyone what is due to them. Those who desire toll money, you give it to them. Those who desire tax, you give it to them. Those who demand what is covered in the word of God, you, you give it to them. Respect and honor to those to whom it belongs. But when it's against God's word, you don't obey. You obey God rather than man. There's coming a time when they will try and shut down all churches. Then you go underground, and many are already geared for that. And we are sort of moving in that direction. Obey God rather than man. Okay. Now I'm asking you for the last time, who are you really serving? And if in your heart you have come to the conclusion, but I'm not really serving God, I want to encourage you, make a quality decision that you're going to serve God. You're not going to complain. You're not going to take God's time. You're not going to take God's money. You're not going to, you know, go your own way. You're not going to agree only with parts of the Bible that you feel comfortable with. You're going to take the full word of God and let the full word of God change you in every area. And you'll see how God will use you. And you'll see how strong you become. And, and how steadfast you will be in the storms that are coming. And that are, we are already in right now. Amen. Amen. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you for the correctiveness of your word. And the encouraging that it brings with it. Lord, none of us are guiltless. We've all sinned in this matter in this way one way or the other and we ask you to forgive us we ask you to cleanse us with the blood of christ and i pray lord now that you will cause 
everyone through the Holy Spirit moving upon their hearts to make quality decisions, to serve God with all of their hearts. Lord, as, as we're even going to send out these notes, let them, let them get into it and understand what it means daily to deny self, what it means to be a servant of God. Lord, let it be in us. Let us not let any stone untouched in the process of denying self and living for you. Give us grace, dear Lord, give us grace. Grace to do what we are not able in ourselves to do. I pray, Lord, your blessing upon each one in the name of Jesus.